The S&P started the year slowly and moved more or less sideways last week until a big jump on Friday. We got a little bit of follow through yesterday, but the market reversed and closed down the day a quarter of a percent. Hello Sector Watchers, welcome to the show. This is the 158th episode of Sector Spotlight for Tuesday the 10th of January and I'm recording it on Monday the 9th. My name is Julius de Campenaar and I am presenting to you from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. After some long-term approaches using seasonality and monthly charts last week, I'm going to take a shot at more near-term developments and use what I call a reversed engineering approach to get to a price target for SPY. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sector Spotlight. Let's talk about sector rotation. Um, last week we actually spoke about the monthly charts and the seasonality and that's all a bit longer term <laughs> orientated. So <clears throat> for this episode I, I want to go into the actual sector rotation and maybe take a little bit of a shorter term time span, see what's going on. So we have the, both RRGs as you're used to, the weekly on the left and the daily on the right showing the, um, the sector spiders, the ETFs that represent those sectors. And if we start on the weekly, then I think the ones that are standing out, the tails that are standing out is energy on the right hand side coming down, coming, coming down hard, but it is at a very high RS ratio level. So that makes it still a very strong sector that is going through a, uh, a setback, a relative setback. On the other hand, we have a very long tail for utilities for XLU, which is moving right here. And that is a sector that is exhibiting strength. Those long tails, they exhibit strength uh, or a strong move, I should say. So, uh, so that is going into the right direction. Somewhat similar for real estate and communication services. However, these two are still quite far to the left and that makes them vulnerable to a rotation inside the improving quadrant, rotating back down towards lagging. So they're, they're very early stages. They can still move towards leading, but I'd like to see them a little bit closer to crossing over the 100 level uh, before really getting into action. And the one that's really, the one single sector that's really inside the lagging quadrant here is consumer discretionary. Um, it's also the lowest ranking on the RS ratio scale. So if you want to put a label on the strongest and the weakest sector, then consumer discretionary is definitely the weakest sector at the time, um, uh, for the time being. If we move to the, to the top right, to the leading quadrant, you see a couple of greens, but they're all rolling over. So you've got materials here, you've got industrials, you've got financials, and you've got staples, and they all started to roll over. So let's say they're still in relative uptrends, but they, these start to, you know, the, the momentum starts to flatten and, and level off a little bit. And you can see that healthcare has just crossed over into the weakening quadrant. So all in all, I think that from this weekly perspective, we've got to conclude that the, um, the outlook is a little bit mixed. If we move to the dailies and we try to align that with what we just saw on that weekly chart, basically getting a little bit more color, a little bit more granular approach here, then um, obviously the, the, um, the, the image is quite different. And if we work our way through it, uh, on the weak side, we've got discretionary here, moving into improving. Um, that, is, that is basically reflecting that little hiccup in um, relative momentum here on that weekly chart. And as you can see, it's, it's also here on the daily, the lowest reading on the R's ratio scale. Um, which makes it very unlikely for this tail to actually move all the way up to leading without um, rotating back to lagging. So I'm going to be very, very cautious still with the consumer discretionary sector for that reason. If we look at technology, then we see that it's picking up. It's inside lagging. It's picking up. But compared to a few of the others, it's a very short tail. We didn't talk about technology on the weekly. But what you see here is a very short tail. And sh as, I, as I said, the long tails in energy and utilities, for example, these, these tails are showing um, that there is power behind those moves. The opposite is true for the technology tail, which is short. 
and that in, that indicates a stable trend. And as technology is on the left hand side of the graph, that means that it is in a stable relative downtrend for the time being. And that is underscored by that daily tail that's inside lagging. It's not very long and it's only picking up a little bit of momentum. It's the second, second uh, lowest reading on the RS ratio scale daily. Now, where, where do we have some, uh, some real positives? I think that communication services, um, for the first time in a very long time, you can see it here picking up. We're seeing some good there, so there could be some follow through, but as I said, on the weekly, it's still very weak, so very, very vulnerable. Uh, but for now, I think that communication services could push a little bit further. And the same goes for uh, financials. That is inside the leading quadrant, um, losing relative momentum and leveling off on the daily. But it's pushing further to the right, and that's a good thing. Nice angles for materials and real estate. So materials... Um, rotating back up into leading whilst the weekly tail is starting to lose a little bit of relative momentum. That is because of the loss that we saw for materials over the last few weeks here. Let me highlight that, it's better visible. So here you see materials going through that setback on that daily scale and all that, that rotation through weakening and now back up into leading that's causing that roll over first at flatting and then that roll over here. If that continues, then we can see uh, materials sort of moving sideways. If this like rotation moves into the lagging quadrant, we will see more of uh, relative weakness for materials. It's, it's a vulnerable sector from a, point, from a relative point of view because it's got very high relative momentum. And obviously, you know, it's like an overbought, oversold indicator, theoretically, they can go all the way up and all the way down, but realistically, at some stage, they're going to roll over and take a breather and, and, and sort of recoup and, and reorganize before the, they make a new push inside that relative trend. Um, industrials losing a bit of momentum on the daily chart, and that is getting sort of in line with what we see on the weekly. And then we see here... Uh, healthcare staples and utilities that that um, those three defensive sectors losing relative strength and relative momentum so they're on a weak RRG heading on that daily scale and let's align them with what's happening on the weekly so we've got uh, healthcare here moving into weakening that is completely in line so healthcare is probably going to be on pause on hold uh, with the rally because the longer term picture is actually pretty good um, for Staples, which is right here, and Staples is right here. You can see that. So both are going through a setback. And Utilities is the only one that is a, at a different heading because here you can see that Utilities is inside weakening at a negative heading, which means between uh, 180 and 270 degrees. And on the weekly, it's actually quite strong. So um, for the near term, defensives are losing strength we see an improvement for communication services maybe for financials energy remains strong although it's losing momentum on both scales and there is a bit of a hiccup in technology and uh, consumer discretionary but a, that's only for the very short term so the longer term picture remains mixed um i think it's sort of it's it's becoming more and more of a I mean, sector rotation is getting more and more important. We Obviously, we had the S&P uh, rallying like across the board during the 2020, 2021 period. And then we just finished 2022 where the S&P across the board was uh, losing strength, losing uh, uh, just in downtrends. And right now we see... Um, we're going to get to the S&P in a minute, but what we see is that uh, the, the decline for the time being seems to have stalled a little bit. It's gone flat, and you can see that there is a bit of a transition going on uh, in the sector landscape. Um, and I think that going forward, <clears throat> a 
Not sure what it's going to take all year, but at least for the next couple of months, I think that you're going to be very, you're going to be seeing a lot more sector rotation um, where, you know, different leaders will emerge. Uh, sectors and stocks that have led a specific period will get out of favor. New groups will get into favor. Um, and the S&P will remain sideways to mildly down, I think is my call on the S&P. We'll, we'll look at that in a minute. But um, for the time being, with this type of sector rotation, without true leadership of um, super strong markets in terms of market capitalization, so uh, technology, uh, healthcare, financials, uh, consumer discretionary, those are the biggest sectors. Um, I, I'm, I, I don't see the S&P going into a super strong new uptrend um, anytime soon. Now, following the analysis of both RRGs and the rotational characteristics, I want to go over all 11 sectors, uh, and I need to do that quite rapidly, because I want to use what I'm going to show you in terms of support and resistance levels and kind of targeting to, uh, to get to what I call a, uh, a reverse engineering of a price target for the S&P 500, or in this case, SPY. So let's move on and start with materials. So here's the materials sector. And the, the, the tar what you've got to keep in mind is that obviously the RRGs are all based on relatives. Uh, we were looking at the RRG lines and the raw route strength line uh, to give a little bit of color to the price movement. But obviously support and resistance levels and price targets are absolute based. And we're, we're going to take a little bit of a shorter term approach here. So I'm going to try and find and share with you the nearest support and resistance levels and sort of um, trends that um, are present in those sectors. So if we start with materials, then I think the near-term outlook is sideways. We're tucked between um, resistance around 84 and support around 77. We need a break on either side to actually call a direction. Rather strength, obviously still pretty good, but losing a bit of momentum. We start with communication services. That's actually looking pretty good because we, we came out of that falling channel. We've got a new or a first higher low in place and it looks we're challenging that upside resistance. So uh, the near term trend for communication services seems to be upward. Relative strength is turning around, so that is a good thing. We move to energy, then I think here we see a uh, sideways move again. I mean, the trend is up, but the near term seems to be caught in a trading range. And I'll, I'm going to warn you, give you a heads up. We will see a lot of sideways moves in all these sectors for the next couple of weeks. Uh, and I think that's a crucial period because a lot of those sectors got to... Um, got to come clean and, and, and have a break at some stage. And that, that will give us a lot more information about the future direction of the S&P 500. So here, energy is, uh, is kind of stuck between, let's say here, that is like 82 and 90, a little bit above 90 uh, in the next couple of weeks. And you can see that back in relative strength where we're moving in a, in a range and losing some momentum and some relative strength as well. Here is financials. Obviously, we got the break out of that, well, it wasn't even a channel, but above that falling resistance, running into new resistance, horizontal, much more important, uh, uh, but now moving sideways and having trouble breaking higher. And that's what you see in that RRG line that's rolling over. That's the trouble of breaking higher and that's impacting its relative strength against the S&P 500. So here also a sector that's very likely going to be ping-ponging between support and resistance. Uh, maybe for the next couple of weeks, could be longer, but only when we're going to see a break on either side of that range, we will get more clarity on the future direction. Another one here is uh, industrials. Also, breaking above that resistance is a good thing. 
uh, but we're now running into resistance around 102 and a half and you can see that uh, today's this is price action of today only uh, we bounced off and we moved lower relative strength remains absolutely good no problem at all but for the next couple of weeks i think that that overhead resistance has been too heavy and we need a little bit of more of a correction um, on the downside i'm looking at 96 for support actually so then we have Technology, that is still very clearly in a downtrend. There's no doubt about it. This is one of the very few sectors where the trend is very clear. In this case, it's down. And I think that we need to watch support around 120, 119 and a half, 120. And on the upside is the falling resistance line, which is currently coming in around 132 and a half. Problem for the S&P is that this is the biggest sector in the universe. So obviously the impact of a decline here is going to have a big impact on the decline of the S&P or, or a big impact on the price of the S&P 500. Here we have consumer staples, another sector that is running into overhead resistance here. I think support is around 73, a little bit higher and resistance is around 76, 77. You will notice that my calls on support and resistance are very rough uh, and, and that's a bit of reason because I don't really believe that support and resistance is, you, can, you cannot nail that with like two digits or something. That is, uh, especially on this time frame. If you, if you work with a lot shorter term charts, then maybe yes, but for like these weekly charts that I prefer, I, I keep a margin because you know, you can see here very clearly that, you know, market respects those uh, highs and lows, but they're not exactly at the same level. And that's why you, you really shouldn't look at, you know, 76.35, whatever, as a support or resistance level. So here for uh, consumer staples, that's also a sector that's very likely um, going to be in, in a sideways move for the near future. Here's real estate. That's another sector that is very clearly in a downtrend. Um, lower highs, lower lows. We got a first higher low in place, but it's nowhere near a new uptrend because we would need to take out 40 resistance around 40 around that previous high to actually bring this thing back into an uptrend. Um, so for the time being, uh, I'm going to call this a negative. I'm going to think that this, this decline here is more powerful than the sort of hesitation that we're currently seeing in this sector. And then here we have utilities, um, very much a sideways sector as well. We had that break below support and then the vicious rally back. And you can see a very good example here of an old support zone, which has worked for a good almost three years, um, is now becoming a resistance zone and um, this, the utility sector is just playing its part in that zone. And as you can see here, this is already happening for like two months. Um, there's no reason why that would not be able to hold on for a little bit longer. Uh, from the relative strength point of view, you can see that the massive decline in relative strength, which happened here, uh, is now gone. It's starting to pick up again, but it hasn't broken above a meaningful resistance level. Um, making it sort of okay in terms of relative strength. The RRG lines seem to be picking up a new trend here. That's what's reflected in that tail that's moving rapidly towards the leading quadrant. So that's a good thing. But uh, for a longer term basis, we would like to see relative strength pushing above these highs. This is the first initial move. But the price action is currently running into trouble. Um, hence the kind of outlook for a more neutral move in the next couple of weeks. And then the last two sectors, we got healthcare here, which, uh, which is actually very strong in terms of relative strength, losing a bit of momentum because we couldn't break higher. It's another sector that ran into resistance, couldn't break higher. We're resting at support. That's pretty significant. We should not actually break below this support level. Um, that um, is a risky thing. If you, if you look at the daily chart let me quickly bring that up here and you can see that today's price action is actually pushing below that previous low making it a short-term negative so i'm going to put a negative for the healthcare sector in the near term 
I mean, this trend is still there, but I think that in the next couple of weeks, we could see some, uh, some weakness in the healthcare sector, especially if this um, break is going to materialize a little bit further. You can see how much room there is there. So, uh, so that's definitely a risky part, riskier part um, of the various sectors. And then the last one is consumer discretionary. And here we already had that clear break and that is now bouncing back towards the old breakout level. It's more of a breakout zone, as you can see here. Uh, and I think that, you know, red strength here is absolutely weak. Uh, this is going to be a very hard case to push further up. So I'm going to label this as a downtrend. Okay, with that rapid fire assessment of all the sectors and throwing out a lot of levels at you, um, we're now getting to the part and the reason why I actually did that because I needed those levels to get to uh, what I want to share with you today. And that's what I call reverse engineering a price target for SPY. Uh, maybe also support and resistance levels for SPY. And there is a, uh, there's a funny story attached to how I got to this and there's not enough time in this show to, uh, to tell you the entire story. I shared bits and pieces of it uh, last Saturday in um, uh, the Earnings Beats Market Outlook, in which I was invited by Tom Bowley, most of you probably know as one of our commentators here on the site. And I wanted to bring something new, something unusual maybe to, uh, to that market outlook. And when I did that, I thought, because I actually came up with this like 30 years ago, and um, I thought I'd bring something new, or in this case, renewed to, uh, to, the, um, to the podium. And I want to share with you today, and I'll give you the backstory and a little bit more of the background in another episode of Sector Spotlight, maybe an article. I need to see why, why I'm going to do that. But um, what's happening, actually, I, what I do is I, I list all the sectors here. I attach a trend. And that is that can be uh, positive, negative, or neutral. And you see that there's a lot of neutrals right now. We, we looked at all those charts. The last price is obviously the last price. That's today's price. And then I have a positive and a negative target. And that's basically my support resistance levels. Um, those of you who watch Sector Spotlight regularly will know that I keep that spreadsheet with my monthly trends. Those are my monthly support and resistance levels. Uh, this is obviously much shorter, as you've seen in the charts that we just went over. And the reason why I need those is because with those support and resistance levels, I can actually calculate the upside potential and the downside risk for uh, this group of sectors. And as you can see, then, you know, you, you can see that the, I think eyeballing it is that the the reds are in general bigger than the greens. So that is a first kind of sign of weakness. But what we need to do or what we can do when we, do, when we have this information um, is coming up with the impact of such a move on the price of the S&P 500. So here's a column with the weights of each sector. Uh, these are updated last Saturday, so they're quite accurate. And what I've got in this column is the impact of the move, so the positive move or the negative move. So if the S&P indeed, or communi communication services, indeed reaches 52.1 with an impact of 7 or a weight of 7.5%, that means an impact, a positive impact of 0.24% on the S&P 500 as a whole. Or if it goes to the downside target, 46.8, that's a decline of a little bit over 7%, that will impact the S&P, that will impact SPY, uh, half a percent. And we can do this for each and every sector. And what that will give us is the impact of all these moves on the S&P 500 itself. Now, obviously... Because the S&P is made up, all of this here together is the S&P 500. So I bring in the S&P 500, then the total impact here, 100%, would be an upside of 3.5%. And, 
and a downside of 4.2%. If I translate that to the current levels, that would mean SPY at 4017, say 402, or 371, 372 to the downside. This column here is the impact based on my trend assessment. So when I have a plus here, this will take the impact to the positive side. If I have a minus here, it'll take the impact to the negative side. And if I have an equal sign, so a neutral trend, it'll take the average of the upside and the downside impact. And if we add all of that up, I get a price target for SPY of 380.3. Let's round it off at 380. When we bring this information back to the chart of SPY itself, then we can see that that 402, 400, 402 level on the upside is close to that falling resistance line. And that 372 is just below its previous low. Obviously not surprisingly that those levels match. If we go a little bit more granular and on the daily chart, then you can see uh, more clearly here 402 and 370, but also 380 is like my short term target based on that sector analysis. And you can see that that will reflect um, a decline, a little decline, two, two and a half percent of um, the S&P or SPY in the next couple of weeks, maybe couple, maybe, maybe one week. And it's, it's respecting that overhead resistance where we are currently running into, which actually pushed the market down today. Um, and there is good support around 372, uh, which is below this low here. And we'll have to see how that plays out. Anyway, I hope you'll give you, I'll give you an idea about a different way of looking at price targets for SPY and how you could achieve them yourself using a very simple spreadsheet. And that's it again. Time flies. Thank you for watching. Please remember, Sector Spotlight airs every Tuesday from 10.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern on Stock Charts Television. Of course, you can also catch the replays on YouTube or any of the on-demand channels. Looking forward to seeing you again next week for a new episode of Sector Spotlight. Same time, same place. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.